Last Handful of Clover, a novel by Wes Mongo Jolly, read by the author. Book Two, Gifts Both Light and Dark. Chapter 83, The Living Alone. June 15th, 8.30 p.m. Only seconds later, Hill returned. Howard watched him emerge with a gasp, his limbs flailing. The big man turned over on his hands and knees, and almost instantly his vast back was heaving, as if he was trying to find his breath or expel something from his lungs. He shivered so hard that Howard thought he was about to vomit, but then, slowly, his breathing returned to normal. Hill kept his forehead on the boards of the porch as he slowly found his way back into the land of the living. Howard and Michelle did their best to help him back into the chair, but compared to him they were both so small that there was little they could do. When he finally sank heavily into the chair, all the two of them could do was kneel by him, one on each side. Each held one of his big hands, and Pill only slowly came to realize who they were. Michelle brought his hand to her lips and kissed it over and over. Oh, Pill, honey, are you okay? Tell me you're okay. The big man's arm finally rose and enfolded his wife and drew her to his chest. But he was also looking over her shoulder at the chubby man who was still on his hands and knees on the rough boards of the porch. The look on Keith's face was almost catatonic. His eyes stared unfocused at his own open hands. Do you remember? asked Howard. Yes, Bill said evenly. I felt it all. Richard drove him out, whoever he was. That was Justin, Howard said, standing. Hill was still holding his wife, with his eyes locked on Keith, and Howard suddenly felt like a stranger, apart from the love these three shared. And Justin is the one who killed Richard. I don't know why, but he hates him. And he won't stop until he hurts him. And that means he won't stop until Keith is dead. Those words thawed Keith, who finally looked up. He caught Pill's eyes, and Howard could see the longing there. Not completely sure why he did it, Howard crossed to Keith and helped him to his feet. The man was trembling, but his eyes were clear. Pill lifted his free arm, gesturing to Keith, and Howard helped the chubby man cross the porch, where he fell against the other side of Pill's chest. The big man's arms enclosed them both now, both Keith and his wife. He was trembling, kissing first the top of his wife's head and then Keith's. Howard slipped into a chair facing them and just watched for several minutes. No word passed between them, but the three of them clung together so tightly that Howard felt almost embarrassed to be witnessing it. The love and intimacy these three shared was like nothing he had ever known in his young life, and he both longed for it and feared it. Quietly, Howard said, we have to go. Michelle pulled slightly away from Pill, just enough to look into his face. Without turning to Howard, she said, Tell Richard thank you. I can't, Howard replied, his voice barely above a whisper. Richard is gone. All three of the friends turned toward him. And Billy's gone too, he said. They're all gone. I think we're on our own. You're listening to The Last Handful of Clover, a novel by Wes Mongo Jolly. 
If you're enjoying this audiobook, please consider supporting the author on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash Wes Mongo Jolly. And for more information, check out the author's website at wesmongojolly.com. That's W-E-S-S-M-O-N-G-O-J-O-L-L-E-Y.com. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for more episodes.